Hello again. It's been quite a hot second since my last bit of lethal content, but version 60 just has so much for me to talk about that I can't ignore it like I did with version 56. This video will be structured like my V51, new content, then into adjustments, then into strategies. This intro cutscene is quite long, so I'm going to say this while it plays out. This update has a lot of cool changes, that's for sure. But if you're someone who plays for high quota numbers or speedrunners of the game, this update is probably the worst one to play on. Version 50 still stands as the best high quota version, and version 40 still stands as the best for speedrunning. I'll explain more later during strategies. Alright, now, let's finally get into the new content. First off, in one of the largest editions, we have a new interior. The community has been begging for one for quite some time, and Zeker's actually delivered. This new interior is an abandoned mineshaft filled with lots of concrete hallways and narrow caves that are dug into the surrounding stone. It does not seem to have set loot spawn locations, meaning the loot is scattered randomly like in mansion tiles. However, the stone caves do seem to have a higher concentration of loot than in the concrete halls. They can be identified by a blue light that is placed right above the doorways. Here are the spawn rates in order of least to highest. The mineshaft interior has a 0% chance to spawn on March, a 0.99% chance on experimentation, 5.56% on Titan, 11.66% on Assurance, 12.43% on Embryon, 19.74% on Rend, 30.13% on Adamance, 31.32% on Dyne, 49.77% on Artifice, 66.1% on Offense, and an astonishing 99.01% on Vow. Yeah, a little overkill I think, but hey, I'm not Zeekers. The main entrance will always be this elevator tile, which enemies cannot get to unless they are brought up by the elevator or they are a Mimic. The Mimics can use the elevators if it is on the same floor as they are, and then bring it up or go down. The caves will also have these water sections that are absolutely terrifying. Zekers did a good job on making this interior frightening. That's all for the new interior, so next let's move on to our new best friend. Goo Goo Gaga Baby Man aka The Man Eater. The Man Eater, this time being named Jeffrey Benjamin II, is a small little cave dwelling creature that will literally act like a newborn. He eats loot, crawls around on the floors of the interior, and is of no threat to any employees. That is... until he gets frightened. I'm not, I'm not Oh shit! Oh my god! When Jeffrey gets scared, he will start crying and has to be rocked by a player. Any of the following will cause him to start crying. Hearing a loud sound, being attacked, seeing a dead player, being held for too long, being rocked for too long, having a flashlight pointed at it, falling from a height, or being taken outside. Yeah. This is a seriously needy baby. If you leave him in his crying phase for about 8 to 16 seconds without rocking him, Jeffrey transforms into a pissed off adult that will absolutely slaughter you and your team. It has extremely dangerous lunges that are faster and better than eyeless dogs and is extremely quick and aggressive. There are a large variety of ways to get rid of this little nuisance though, which will be discussed later in strategies. Next up, we have eight new pieces of scrap, a garbage lid that is two-handed, weightless and relatively low value, a clock which is one-handed, 26 pounds and decent value, a control pad, two-handed, 16 pounds, decent value, plastic cup, one-handed, weightless, low value, toilet paper, two-handed, five pounds, pretty good value and for some reason doesn't let you see absolutely anything while holding it, Zed dog or Zeker's dog, one-handed, weightless, crazy high value but also absurdly rare. It also makes this funny noise when dropped. <laughs> Toy train, one-handed, 21 pounds, pretty good value, and a soccer ball, two-handed, 19 pounds, decent value, and it can be kicked around by both enemies and players. Yes, you can now transfer two big items without having to juggle. That's it for scrap, so now on to our last bit of new content. There is now a chance for scrap on all moons to be identical. That means you can have a day with all gold bars or all hairbrushes. This chance is quite low and there's a lot of boundaries set in place to ensure that this doesn't result in days with extremely high value loot. I'll break it down the best I can. There is an 8.6% chance upon landing that all of the map's loot will be the exact same item. If the chosen item happens to be extremely rare, then it will basically flip a coin to decide if the scrap event will happen at all. A 60-40 coin, that is. If the 40% wins, then all of those scrap items will be restricted to 50 to 170 credit value. 
If the scrap event does not choose a rare item, say comedy masks for example, then all of the items on the map will go through the next process. If all of the items add up to less than 600 credits, then all of the scrap will get its value multiplied by 1.4 times. If all of the items manage to add up to above 4500 credits, say all gold bars for example, then it will have its value multiplied by 0.7. I know, all that was a little confusing, but basically just know that the chance of getting an all gold bar day is out there, but extremely rare. Okay, enough of the new additions, let's finally get into our adjustments, because there has been a lot. First off, the kidnapper fox was removed. Zeekers received too many complaints about this enemy and its functionality, so he's going to hopefully rework it and add it another update. Next up, Dyne has had its entrance locations flipped. Fire exit is where main was, and main is in the vicinity of where fire exit was. This is actually pretty cool, it makes driving the cruiser to main pretty easy. Next we have a big one, we have some coilhead behavior adjustments. Coalheads are getting a big nerf and are now pretty stupid. They lose track of you quick after losing line of sight or you get too far. And they also have this new recharge phase. After chasing a certain distance, their head retracts in and they will not move for about 30 seconds while they recharge. I honestly think this is a necessary nerf. Coalheads were extremely strong enemies, so much so that oftentimes players would be required to trap them in order to proceed with looting. Speaking of trapping, coils can no longer be trapped. Their pathing now refuses to let them move while in line of sight, no matter the circumstances. Coals are way less of a problem now, and honestly go from an S tier enemy to a B tier enemy. I'm really happy with this change. Alright, moving on, a quick little change. The door sounds of the mansion tile set now have a different sound than that of in the facility. Finally, an adjustment we've all been waiting for, Bracken and Spore Lizard lag has been fixed. It only took 60 versions, but no more required pathfinding lag fix mod in your mod packs. Seekers managed to do it. Alright, rapid firing some minor changes. Butlers will attack more often when bumping into players. Thumpers make noise when crashing into walls. Spore lizards make noise when stomping. Weed killer is cheaper. Doesn't really change that they're useless. Vent crawling sounds are gone. Vein shrouds spawn further from the ship and less often and players will spectate the closest person to them after dying, for comedic effect. Lastly, we have some map adjustments. Experimentation can no longer spawn spike traps. Artifice has a more difficult interior and exterior, with Zeekers readjusting his spawn curve changes in V56. Artifice is also smaller on the interior and has a lot less scrap. The range went from 31 to 37 items all the way down to 26 to 30. Huge nerf, I know. The big positive of the cost of the map is basically gone. That's all we have for changes, but there was also a mention of the removal of two unknown enemies in these patch notes. The Bog Crawler and the Goopy Goblin. These aren't enemies to begin with, so it's assumed either Zeekers is just messing with us or he plans to add these in a future update. Alright, with all of that out of the way, we can finally move on to strategies. I'm going to start with the most demanded knowledge. How the heck do we abandon our son? Well, it should first be mentioned that dropping Jeffrey into any pits will not get him stuck or kill him. He will simply teleport to the nearest tile. He cannot be killed in his baby phase, only his adult phase. That doesn't mean little baby man is invincible to our normal relentless tactics though. You can throw baby man down the elevator hole in mine shafts. You can stick him into the wall of various locations, you can throw him on top of the apparatus, you can throw him into factory room pit, drown him in March's pond, close him in the back of the cruiser, and lastly you can eliminate him with spike traps. If your baby has already become an adult, you can say goodbye to all of these tactics. He has 5 hit points, however he does not properly take damage at the moment, meaning even landmines won't take him out. You're gonna have to rely on a shovel and zap gun to get anything done, or a spike trap. I know, really old school. Stun grenades don't seem to work, and shotguns don't do jack. So advice from me, abandon your child before he gets too attached. Next up on the strategies list, we have got to deal with the new interior. The loot has the spread of mansion and the complexity of facility. You'll find yourself lost in no time and the tight hallways don't allow for easy maneuvering around enemies. If your plan is to play this patch for high quota, you should not expect any numbers near what the current world record is. For navigating the interior, try and stick to looting the stone caves since that's where the majority of loot lies. They are extremely complex and dangerous, however they contain little to no traps or turrets, meaning that most of your worry is just enemies. Now you might be wondering, there's a way to trap jesters on both facility and mansion, so how do we do it on mineshaft? Well, 
there's a bit of a makeshift way, but it works. If you climb on the elevator and send you and the jester up, he cannot path back down unless the elevator goes with him. Abandon him at the front door and have everyone go fire since he'll be stuck at the main entrance. This is the best we're going to get for now while high quota runners start checking every nook and cranny for a glitch spot. That actually covers about everything for this patch. Quite eventful and super fun in terms of new content. However, for those who are a little more competitive about the game, this patch is still worse than V50. Zekers is doing a good job at being creative, but not so good of a job at keeping everyone happy. Sometimes it feels like he watches us high quota runners just to make life harder on us. Like this cheese spot for enemies. I guess I'll see you guys around another time when Zekers comes around with another two week delayed update. Thanks for sticking around, and I normally never ask, but this time around, make sure to subscribe. It makes me kick my feet in the air a little.